You've been eating protein wrong this entire time. Meaning that you could have absolutely built more muscle by prioritizing specific meals. And that age plays a huge factor in determining how much protein you should eat. Also, your protein requirements are completely different depending on whether you're in a calorie surplus or in a deficit. Ooh, that was a good one. I gotta start doing that more. To help you make better decisions in terms of protein intake, I'm gonna have to give you a better understanding of what's going on inside your muscle cells. And one thing's for certain for anyone who's ever studied this, the intracellular signaling pathways are disgustingly confusing. <laughs> But don't worry, you don't have to remember this entire process to be able to get some information from it. We just have to zoom in on very specific parts. Think about the first time you saw that poorly illustrated vagina in sex ed class and realized that the placement of the clitoris was the exact distance as the middle joystick of your N64 controller. You still had no idea how the damn thing worked, but just getting a lay of the land made you instantly better at flicking beans. Because if you don't at least have a rough understanding of the process, you're gonna start taking it for granted and skipping meals because everything seems like magic. Take this chicken breast for instance. If I ask most people what's the process of this getting assimilated into your muscles, most people will say, um, protein is basically just amino acids. So when you chew it, it breaks it apart like alphabet cereal and that goes into your stomach and then it goes into your muscles. If that's your answer, you're not completely wrong, but you're also slightly delayed. But when you realize that roughly 50% of the protein you ingest goes to the organs in your abdominal cavity, your liver, gut, pancreas, spleen, and of the remaining 50%, 40% is used in metabolic processes for energy production, urea synthesis, and to a minor extent, neurotransmitter production. That means only 10% of this chicken makes it into your muscles to be used for protein synthesis. Now, those percentages do vary, depending on whether you're in a positive or negative energy balance, but those exact percentages were taken from a case study where they took 12 men and did a technique called isotope labeling. This allowed them to track protein through the entire process, and hopefully that gets you to open your eyes and stop missing meals, asshole. Now we've all heard this from some brilliant person in our life that you can only absorb roughly around 25 grams of protein per meal. And I'll explain why that's not the case in a second. But, but the reason they say that 25 grams is all you can utilize is because 25 grams of high quality protein from steak, chicken, egg whites, whey protein will net you right around three grams of leucine. And leucine is the one amino acid that will dictate whether or not you grow out of those skinny genes. All the other essential amino acids are needed, but your muscle cells have a leucine threshold that has to be met in order to initiate and maximize protein synthesis. Think about your favorite bukkake scene. All the men are the other essential amino acids, but without the woman, leucine, it's something completely different. And I know those ratios don't make sense knowing what you know now, which is half of those amino acids are lost to your liver. So how could 25 grams of protein net you three grams of leucine? Well, BCAAs are largely untouched by your liver. 75 to 80% get through, they're special. Now in terms of hypertrophy, it's important to understand that your body is constantly synthesizing new protein and breaking it down at the same time. So if in a 24 hour period, you've synthesized more protein than you've broken down, then congratulations, you've created what's called protein accretion and now you're building muscle. Now obviously you're gonna need to sustain it for more than 24 hours to see any results, but if you can do it for 24, you can do it indefinitely. Now when you start to look at the research surrounding hypertrophy, you're you're gonna notice a lot of it is centered around mTOR, which is an enzyme within cells that's responsible for regulating cell growth. The easiest way to think about it in terms of building muscle is that if you activate mTOR, you are increasing protein synthesis. Also, one of the things that helped me connect the dots in terms of why leucine has a threshold is because one of the things it does is attaches to cestrin 2. The cestrin 2 is a cock blocker of mTOR. So if it is attached to leucine, mTOR can activate and initiate protein synthesis. And it's important to note that several things activate mTOR. Mechanical tension, insulin, IGF-1, which should give you some insight of how powerful a peptide IGF-1 is, as well as leucine. Exercise itself is catabolic. And if you don't reach that leucine threshold post-workout, you will stay catabolic. It makes you realize how stupid everything is because everything with a nutrition label should tell you the amount of leucine in it because that's the most important thing. And I know what you're thinking because I had the same dumb idea. If leucine is so important, why don't I just snort that shit all day? You still need all the other essential amino acids, otherwise the process is completely halted. Think back to the Bukaki reference. If all the other essential amino acids, those guys are out of the picture, then it's just a sad, sad woman. So why did I go over all that? Because the general recommendation of 1.6 to 2.2 two grams per kilogram, or in America, 0.73 to one gram per pound is good for the general population, 
but it's missing a lot of context and probably not good for you. For one thing, it tells us nothing about how we should structure our meals. Should we divide the protein evenly? I'm 230 pounds, so if I wanted to eat one gram per pound, that's obviously 230 grams. So should I split that up evenly between five meals, which makes it 46 grams per meal? The answer is no. That was, that was a rhetorical question. In reality, there's three meals we should be prioritizing. The first one being right when you wake up, because that's when you're the most catabolic. So if you just wake up and have a few eggs, you're gonna remain in a catabolic state until that next meal when the leucine threshold is finally reached. The second one being right after your workout. There is some evidence showing that a protein shake right after your workout is beneficial, but that's for novice trainees. Most of us are way beyond that point, so just wait till you get home and have one of your biggest protein meals of the day. Finally, before you go to bed, because your liver constantly needs amino acids, so if you don't have an adequate supply, it'll rob them from your muscles. I can't be the only one that shits every night before they go to bed. So what that would look like instead is meal one and meal five are 55 grams. And let's say I worked out after meal two, so meal three would be 55, and meal two and meal four would be roughly around 33 grams. I know it doesn't seem like a big difference, but it matters. And I look like a fucking elf. The reason it matters and why those nine grams can make a difference is because as you age, the rate at which you can synthesize protein goes down, but your capacity does not. That's why saying that 25 grams is the max you can utilize is a crock of shit because it doesn't factor in age and anabolic resistance. Which simply stated is the phenomenon that as you age, you require more protein per day, per meal and have a higher leucine threshold to reach to be able to initiate and maximize protein synthesis. And I'm sure you've noticed this. When you were younger, you could get away with eating delicious toaster strudels and you would put on muscle. But as an adult, you can eat two pounds of steak and it doesn't even make your nipples hard. So contrary to popular belief, as you age, you need more protein. But it's important what I said before, you still have the capacity to build just as much muscle. You just need to eat more protein to make up for the fact you suck at synthesizing it. Now, another case study that takes a shit in a paper bag, lights it on fire and leaves it on the doorstep of the idea that you can only synthesize synthesized 25 grams of protein per meal is one where they took two groups of people, had them train their entire body and gave one group 20 grams of protein, the other group 40. The group that had 40 grams had a higher rate of muscle protein synthesis. Now the biggest aha moment from that was that training more body parts allowed you to increase muscle protein synthesis with more protein. But I would bet it's also related to intensity as well. So if you've ever done one of my programs and you've almost died, then you probably would benefit from more protein. Not that garbage protein bar you always eat. One thing that nobody talks about in terms of this general recommendation is does it hold up in a calorie deficit versus a surplus? Nope. No, it doesn't. When you're in a calorie deficit, you're gonna be building very little, if any muscle at all, and that really shouldn't even be your goal. You should be trying to maintain as much muscle mass as possible. When they looked at actual athletes, not just people they tricked to come in for pizza Fridays at Planet Fitness, they found they retained more muscle with an extremely high protein intake. I understand, that's an extreme amount of protein. If I ate at the top end of what they recommend, I'd be eating 322 grams a day. I can smell the bathroom now. But remember, this isn't just me saying this, this is based upon different trials of people in a deficit. So if you're limiting your calories, it would be beneficial to up your protein. But again, if your goal is to grow, then you shouldn't even be in a deficit. You don't need to be an extreme surplus, but 10% if you're an experienced lifter is plenty, 20% if you're novice, because novice lifters can do whatever the hell they want. So let's wrap this up by answering the question whether or not there is a limit or a ceiling to muscle protein synthesis. And based upon this study, there probably is one, but it's definitely higher than we thought. There was two groups. One had 40 grams of protein, the other had 70. The 70 gram group had higher rates of muscle protein synthesis, but just as important, if not more, they had less muscle protein breakdown. So to summarize what we've learned here today, meal frequency is more about what allows you to maximize that leucine threshold. So eight meals with 20 grams is probably less effective than four at 40. When you're in a deficit, you're gonna to wanna to definitely eat more than the recommended amount. But when you're in a surplus, a gram per pound or even less is acceptable, but make sure you don't eat too many calories 10% over your maintenance is perfectly fine. And I would have those extra calories coming from carbohydrates. Also make sure you prioritize and have the most protein in those three meals where you're either the most catabolic or it's going the longest between meals. So, so first thing when you wake up, post-workout and right before you go to bed. And finally, it sucks to get old. If you guys haven't tried the new app, I'll link it below. There's a 12 week progressive overload PPL. I've just updated the Back by Science program. That's now eight weeks. I've also added the old garage program, and by the end of this week, I'm gonna have a new garage program in there, so good luck.